All right, hello Meridian. Behind the camera, this is Shandy Lamb, your communication specialist for the Public Works Department. And on screen with you today, I have Jason Korn and Dave Miles, and they are our in-house experts on all things recycling. They're going to be introducing the program, sorting through some trash for you today, so I'm gonna turn it over to them. If at any time that you wanna ask any questions, just go ahead and do that in the comments. I will relay those questions to them. We'll try to get all of your questions answered today, and if we can't, we will find the answer for you. All right, thank you, Shandy. Appreciate it. Jason, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Good. So we thought we'd spend a few minutes talking to the, the group out there about the Hefty Energy Bag Program in Meridian. Uh, maybe just give a brief introduction about the program and who can participate and maybe why the programs come about. And then we'll get into some details about how to use the program and what to do with the energy bags and what products can go where, um, you and Jason and some of the resources we have. And maybe answer any questions that, that you all have as well on the way. So as, as many of you are aware, the Hefty Energy Bag, and this is your, your bag kit here, is a new program in Meridian uh, that came about primarily because of the changes in the recycling markets um, driven by the China markets. As many people know, a lot of the plastics in our country um, had been shipped over to China in the past for recycling. And due to regulation changes in China, um, a lot of that has now uh, changed and a lot of the plastics going out have stopped going out of country and, and now we're looking for ways to solve the, the issues. Um, so that's sort of the why of the program. Um, who can participate in Meridian? Uh, we initially started with a, a what I call a 1500 participation, uh, 1500 person participation sort of kickstart to the program that the city council approved uh, for us to get going. And in the meantime, um, working with the city of Boise and, and other partners as well, Reynolds, um, who's the manufacturer of the, the bag kit, they've worked with Albertsons in the Treasure Valley and Ada County, and now uh, bag kits are available for retail purchase in Meridian Albertson stores for Meridian residents um, and the kit. The caveat to that is if you're not in the city of Meridian, we do encourage you to reach out and, and ask your local city uh, So everybody's welcome to participate. Once you have your bags, you're ready to use them. They're, they are uh, ready to go and, and able to be used immediately. So speak, maybe with that. Can you speak up a little bit? Sure, with that, uh, let's turn it over to Jason maybe and just sort of look at the ins and outs of the program and maybe what goes in the bag, what doesn't go in the bag. And then uh, if you have questions about that, um, we can try and answer those questions as well. Sure, thanks Dave. Yeah. Now we get into the, the interesting stuff here. So you see in front of us, we have the carts that most of you will have, and the green cart with the red lid, the recycling cart. Here we have an example of the hefty energy bag you can put into a smaller trash can, something you could have in the, your kitchen or you know, under the sink, different room. And you have your solid green trash cart. And we're gonna go over commonly used materials and what goes where and really how we can utilize this new resource of this orange hefty energy bag. So Jason, a lot of, a lot of people talk about, you know, what can, can we still recycle? So maybe can we start with, maybe if, if people were to focus on just a few big items that can be recycled, what should, the, what should we start with? Is it still the case that we can recycle cardboard and aluminum and tin in the recycling can as normal? Correct. So we still recycle papers, cardboard, newspaper, magazines, aluminum cans, tin foil. So that hasn't changed. So most of the things that we're used to recycling, that hasn't changed. The, the big changes have come with plastics. So, so stuff like this is still recyclable. Correct. Still just get cardboard this box. We'd recommend flattening it as much as you can. You're gonna get, have more space in your recycling cart. And then that'll be in here. Oh, recycle, right? So red lid recycling red, cart. Red lid. Um, okay, what else? When it comes to plastics, we still can recycle hard rigid plastics that have a one or two label on them. So this is a body wash bottle in shape of a bottle and it has a number one if you look at it down there. You probably can't see it from this camera, but it does. So what we do with this one is put the bottle into our recycling bin and this is where we can utilize the new hefty orange energy bag by taking the cap and putting it into our orange bag. 
Yeah, the caps are a big question a lot of times. I mean, right. For the most part, the plastic caps can now go in the energy bag, correct? Right. All plastic caps. Okay. So there are certain categories um, of what could go into the energy bag. And we have these two reference guides here that are really handy. It'll answer most of your questions if you look at them and kind of go through the process of what an item, where an item goes. So we have a the home reference guide, which is what we consider a basic guide. If you're not getting into the detailed numbers, this will tell you generally what items go where. So we saw the cardboard, it's cardboard, recycle card. Um, plastic, only detergent, milk, jug, soft drink, juice bottles. So anything in a bottle or jug shape. So your bigger, of, harder, more firm right. plastic material. So a shampoo bottle is a bottle and it's a hard bottle. So that could go into the recycling. And we have in here the Hefty Energy Bag Program. And it's in this guide, it's a list of items. So if it's on this list, it could go into the orange bag. Um, and then we have on the side here, trash cart. So we have water bottles, clamshell containers, wax coated cups. So we'll go through a few more items. Yeah, there. so you mentioned cardboard. So let's yes. stay on that theme for a few minutes. So our, our infamous donut box, what do we do with that? Donut boxes. So while most of it is cardboard, this is a mix of cardboard and plastic, and cardboard is generally recyclable. You can see if you open this box up that it is actually lined with plastic in the inside, quite a bit there, and it's contaminated with uh, a lot of you know, donut remnants. So on this bag, on this, this cardboard donut box, I would throw this in the trash because it's most of it's contaminated in here. Now, there are pieces of cardboard on here that you could separate from the plastic if you wanted to and put that into your recycling cart, or you could just throw this whole thing away if you don't want to deal with trying to separate what's dirty and what's clean. So this is similar to something you'd see in a pizza box. Yep. So a lot of people have thought, oh, it's cardboard, it's recyclable. Well, once it's contaminated with that grease, it makes it very difficult to recover and turn into new paper or cardboard products. Because that grease is, will stay stuck onto that cardboard. And if you were to make new cardboard out of it, it would be greasy cardboard. And yeah. that really isn't valuable for anybody. So. so you bring up an interesting point because we heard a lot about when in doubt, throw it out. And the reason for that is related to that contamination, whether it's food waste or some other contamination on the material. So it's very important that if you do have a contaminated product, you certainly can work to try and clean it out and make sure that it's clean, but in cases like this where you've got a cardboard that's going to absorb a lot of food waste, absorb a lot of grease, that makes it contaminated, so when in doubt, throw it out, and that helps keep our recycling stream clean. Right. So inside of that donut box, I, I found this plastic fork. Now this plastic fork, if you look at your, I'm sorry, this is a knife, <laughs> fork and knife. The plastic knife, if you look at your home reference guide, that is on here is plastic single serve, um, plastic dinnerware, straws, utensils, cups, plates, etc. So this is on your list of what could go into this hefty energy bag. So I'll just put that there. Yep. So you just want to, with any utensil like that, you wipe it off as best you can, right. make it make it as clean as possible. Because again, food waste contamination. You want to keep that yep. out of the recycling. It, it's not as big a deal on the the plastics as it is the cardboard and paper because this is going to be stuff that goes in here is going to be heated up to a certain temperature as it's converted into a diesel fuel. A little different than the paper process, so you have to think about how things are going to be recycled. Okay. What else do you have? Okay, let's go through some other common items here. So this is a, like a salad or in this case arugula container. This is what you would consider a clamshell type of container. So we've heard a lot of questions about clamshells. I know there's right. a lot of people so what you want to do is, if you just use the home reference guides, hence lid, clamshell containers, plastic go-to fruit, vegetable hinge containers, is under the trash section. Now if you also look at it, it's got a number one, and so you might think number one plastics are recyclable. Well, in the past I think they were, but there were a lot of problems with number one plastics. And some of the things that aren't bottle or juice containers are simply too thin and you get that crinkly sound in them. So that
that would go into the trash and get there. So it's just this way. Yeah. Any... So that that crinkle sound has been a lot of right. there's been a lot of conversation because I know with water bottles, a lot of people have said, why do water bottles? Why can we do water bottles? Why can't we recycle water bottles? How come some can go in, some can't? And it really is that crinkly, squishable that you material that right. it's really thin plastic. You can crush it down. That's what's not beneficial to be in the recycling and causes contamination problems. Correct. So we have an example of another one right here, a water bottle. You know, if you look at it, it has a one on the bottom. Most water bottles have a number one. Um, with the number alone, it would be recyclable, but because it is crinkly, can you hear that sound? That's the real test you wanna, you wanna judge it by. So if you have that sound, that is likely gonna be trash. Now what about, what about that lid? Okay, so we can take that lid off. And again, if you look at your, your guides here, lids can go into the hefty energy bag. So we'll throw that in the bag. I throw this crinkly. And you can flatten this thing out. Do this with my hands here. And that is not going to be able to be recycled because it will just end up causing loose around and contaminating the rest of the more rigid plastic. So we'll throw that in the trash. Cool. Um, what else you got? A few other items. So if you look at our cardboard box earlier, packaging material, we have styrofoam packing in it. You know, if you do a lot of shopping online or get items shipped to you, you're gonna end up with a lot of styrofoam packing. So in the past, this has been clearly not recyclable and put in the trash. However, with this new Hefty Energy Bag program, if you look at our guides, it's on the list um, under packaging, shipping, um, foam product, so foam product, this would be a styrofoam product. You can put that into your, your energy bag. bag. Yeah. So all that stuff that you, all the styrofoam you get when you buy the new TVs and they come in the boxes, or you buy any major appliance these days, they come in styrofoam pack boxes, all that styrofoam can go in the, yes. the energy bag. So the things box. that used to fill up your trash can, at least for me, if you bought a, a large item that came in a box, now, does that include the peanuts too, the styrofoam peanuts? Correct. Yeah. So any foam product. So that's Very good. that's the uh, yeah styrofoam to go food containers, styrofoam peanuts, uh, styrofoam packing materials. So any foam, styrofoam type materials are recoverable in the energy bag. Excellent. Okay. So let's go through another product that we have here, a pet food bag. So it sounds like we're getting some feedback that uh, we have to be louder. We'll be as loud as we can for your, so you can hear us, but uh, thank you for the comments. So we have a plastic dog food bag here. Um, I don't think this has any numbers on it that would normally be recyclable. So in the past, we have been putting these type of pet food bags in the trash because they don't have a number, they're not recyclable. But now with this Hefty Energy Bag program, if you look at our guide, is all plastic bags and this counts as a plastic bag and if you look at the inside it's not lined with any other materials it'd be paper or foil or something else it's just all plastic bags so now instead of throwing this away in the trash we can put this into our energy bag and at least get some value from recovering that so what about the, the dog food bags that are more cardboard based or, or paper based with a, a wax coated lining inside or a foil liner inside? What do we do with those? So a bag like that is a combination of two different materials that aren't separatable. So that would generally be trash. Okay. Great. Thank you. What else you right. got? So we got your typical fast food cup. Oh yeah. So we get one of these. We think, okay, what are we going to do with that? You look at the lid here, it says number six, and you have your straw, which is unnumbered. And if you go back to your guide, lids and straws are on your guide as something that's recoverable into the energy bag. Great. So we found a place finally for all those straws. Correct. Okay, good. Yes, so don't let those get into the ocean and cause problems with sea turtles and other marine life. Right. Um, send it down to get recovered. Very good. You look with the cup here, this is a paper cup, yeah. you might think it's recyclable. It is lined with a plastic or wax coating in the inside to keep that paper from soaking up the liquids that are inside. 
Okay, so that's two different materials yeah. in one product. They're not separatable, so we gotta put this one in the trash. So that two material combination is really something maybe that people can key in on and, and focus on that if you can't separate the two materials, when in doubt, it's probably best to throw it out. Uh, is that correct? Right. right? Yep. Good. Okay. A few more plastics in here. Sure. Plastics, again, are, are a thing that has changed recently. Um, we got a yogurt cup, Giovanni yogurt cup, and we look at the bottom, it's a number five, and if we go back to our guide, again we have the easy to use basic guide, and it is on the list here of plastic food packaging, toxic dairy, tubs, and lids. Um, so that goes into the hefty energy bag. Now with, with that, we are asking people to some degree, make an effort to wash it out as best you can, clean out the food scraps that are left in the container. Again, right. it doesn't have to be spot clean, but you know, don't take put a few it, minutes. Don't put it in your dishwasher. Just rinse it out in your sink. Yeah. Um, you really don't want you know some kind of dairy products left if you're putting this in your bag or something you're going to have around in your household. Um, again, just general cleanliness. Great. Okay. Let's Got time for a few more things. Um, Shandy, are we getting many questions? I don't have any yet. So okay. if anybody wants to hop on with any. You, any questions we will give you live answers okay hey so I have another item here toothpaste to something generally we would have thrown away in the past um, now it is on our reference guide list as an item that can be recovered in the hefty energy bag we just ask that you use as much toothpaste as you can use it all um, we don't have to cut it open clean it out just get as much as you can out, and this yeah. goes for any type of tube product, whether that be a cream or lotion, yeah. something that's in a plastic tube like this. I know in our house we like to roll it up all the way, just probably to use all the tubes of paste first, and that's Correct. about as clean as we can get it. Yep, and that's that about is, as clean as we need to get it. That's it. Good. So we put that into our bag. Great. Um, get a, a milk jug here. A milk jug. If we look at the number system. We'll find that it's a number two. And number ones and twos, jugs, jars, yeah. um, so that type of. You hear it? It's not the crinkle sound. It's a little thicker. It's a solid, more thud sound. Yes. Yeah. So we take the lid off from our lids, go into our energy bag, and our milk jug into our normal recycling bin. Now I know a lot of people have been asking questions about the little plastic ring that the lid is attached to before okay. you open it. What about that plastic lid uh, ring? Do we need to take the ring off? Or? You don't need to take the lid, the ring off. If you want to, you could take that ring off and put it into your energy bag, but it's not absolutely necessary. If that's gonna be too much trouble, that's gonna keep you from recycling that, that could go right into the recycling bin. Great, good. Okay, find some more materials here. Chip bag, chip bag is on our, again, on our Reference guide, it's one of the listed items, plastic bags, any plastic bag, so we can put that to our the energy bag. Excellent. Yes. Um, okay. This is a tougher one. So, coffee shop, plastic cup, lid and a straw. So, on this particular one, if we look at the numbers, it's a number one. But it is that crinkle, crinkle sound. sound. Yeah, it's not a thud. It, it, it stays crinkled after you crinkle it. And you can squish it down if you really try to. You can basically crumple it up. Correct. Yeah. So on this one, we would put the cup into the trash. Now if we look at the lid and the straw. These are on our list of things that can go into okay. our energy bag. Good. Now you mentioned the chip bags and because they're on the list and they're plastic bags. What about some of those chip bags that are foil bags? Can those go in the, the energy bag as well? So if you look at this one, it does have what looks to be a foil lining in there, but that is actually plastic, okay. so it's not real foil. Now there are other bags that are foil lined. Um, I think there's some freeze dry type things that are made to last a really long time. And those, if it's just foil, it needs to aluminum foil it can be into your normal recycling. If it's combined plastic and foil, that needs to go in the trash. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So a few 
few more items here. How about we just want to maybe reiterate standard aluminum can. Yep. Still no. recyclable, always better recyclable, good high quality material that goes right into our recycling bin. Correct. Nothing's changed about cans. Excellent. Those are still valuable to be recycled. Excellent. Um, get a few other items here. Soap. Well, look at my soap. I finished using it. Look at the number. It's a number one. It's not crinkly. Sounds pretty solid to me. Right. So I will take the lid off. This lid comes with a pump with metal in it, metal spring. So that's two separate things together. That goes in the trash. Okay. It's not just a plastic lid. So there's that, that two material thing yes. again. Yes. Good, good to remember. And this can go in your recycling. Okay. And we, again, we do ask that you just make an effort to rinse those out, just run Correct. them into the faucet as best you can. Yep. Okay. Um, pull another item out here. A pill bottle. A pill bottle. The amber colored pill bottle with the lid that is on your home guide as an item that could be recovered in your hefty energy bag. So normally it would have been put in the trash, but now it's going in here. Okay, we've got time for a few more, so maybe let's tackle one of the big things. Uh, I know a lot of people get these air packets um, in their shipment boxes. I know I order a ton of stuff online and I get a bunch of these. What do I do with these now? So all your packaging material is on your Hefty Energy Bag guide as something that could be now recovered in your Hefty Energy Bag. So I just want to pop these pillows, which is kind of fun to do sometimes. I know and my kids and my kids enjoy it, and I enjoy it. I don't know that the dog likes it so much, but probably not. Yep, mm -hmm. pop them down. So that, and the reason yeah. part of popping them down is you can actually save more space in your energy bag. Correct. Really utilize a lot of the space, and these bags can hold a lot of material. Correct. So. Most of these plastics you could stuff down into that bag and make them last a lot longer. I know for me, I, I may not use one every two weeks, maybe it's a month if oh, yeah. I keep you know, stuffing some of that plastic down. Yeah. And that's an important point. The, the bags come as a, a count of 26 bags, it should last you a year's supply worth, but you don't have to put it out every week. Or on the alternative, you can put a, multiple bags out if, if you really do have that much material. Right. How about uh, maybe one more thing and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. How about another plastic cup here? Um, Red plastic cups. Right. It could be a solo cup. Definitely a Kirkland signature. Um, but on this one, you would want to check your advanced guide for numbers. And if you look on the bottom, it is a number five. So that number five plastic, four, five, six, or seven, anything that has a four, five, six, or seven can now go into your hefty energy bag. So Shandy, I understand maybe we have a question or two? Yeah, we have several questions. So I'm gonna start with a, a hard one so all the rest seem easier. Okay. Um, Rick is wondering about synthetic wine corks. Good question. Right, so with something like that, I would go to one of our and the guides. guides here, you know, basic guide, advanced guide. So if it is not marked four, five, six, or seven, you would go down to what is listed here. And plastic wine corks, corks are not listed on any of the items that are already approved to go in here. So on something like that, again, if when in doubt, throw it out. And if it's any unlabeled plastic that's not identified, that should be going into the trash right now unless it becomes on the list. <laughs> and I did, I did see some comments on Facebook of people that were giving alternative solutions of places that you might be able to take wine corks. You could sell them on eBay even. Um, you can check with wineries, see if they would take them. That's always a great alternative yep. if, if somebody can reuse the product. So Shandy, that's a, that's a great point, maybe to the, the, back to the recycling as a whole. Looking at your materials and what you buy and what you use, you know, if we all think back to the recycle, reduce, reuse, the triangle, green arrows, it's really important in our mind to focus on, number one, reduce the amount of material that you use. So find ways, if you can, to reduce the amount of plastics that you buy or, or recyclable materials or, or trash materials that you have in your house. If not, maybe try and find a way to reuse them. Are there people out there that want them? Are there things that you can do differently? I know there's a lot of things on social media and Pinterest and all those kinds of things that talk about crafts and hobbies. So really trying to focus on reducing the amount of material we use and reusing it first 
so that we don't necessarily wind up in scenarios like this where we we have major outreach efforts to try and change new programs and implement new programs um, we're happy to do it and we're glad there are solutions to that but first focusing on reducing and reusing are really the key drivers around all of the recycling products uh, so yeah good point so carol is wondering about floss containers good question okay so that would be something similar to the plastic wine corks and i would go to one of our guides here and if it is not marked with one of the recycling numbers um, and it's not a four or five six or seven and it's not on the list I would throw that away as it is it, it falls in the unlabeled plastics that it is not on the list so if they turn it over and see that it has a number four for instance on the bottom yeah maybe they can recycle they, it they can put that into the hefty energy bag okay yeah very good now what about the little plastic tab inside of that? Should it pull that whole structure out? Or probably if it's two separate materials and you can separate it, the best thing would be either to throw it away because we're not sure, or if you can truly separate it and the, just the number four, five, or six, put that in the energy bag. Yeah. Okay, up next I have a question about the packaging material from Tina. She's wondering if you need to pop the packaging, the bubbles or like the pillows that you just put in there, if you need to pop those first. Again, with the pillows, I would pop them just because they take up so much space and that's just air in there. Um, if it, there are some of the smaller um, bubble wrap type stuff, you, you might not need to because it's not gonna save you that much space if you pop it or not. Yeah. And this is all going to be heated up when it gets processed and I'm sure that air will get taken out at that point. The biggest biggest reason we say pop it is to utilize more space in your bag. So you don't have to pop them, but it's gonna help you use, um, put more material in your bag. And provide good entertainment to children. That's right. <laughs> um, so next up, I have a question as to when they can start using their bags and how they go about that from Slavic. Yeah, so using the bags, as soon as you have them, start using them. So. Um, and maybe this helps us wrap up a little bit. As you fill up your orange bags, the whole intent is that your bag is full, now what do I do with them? Well, you wanna tie them up tightly, and uh, Jason, go ahead and show that here. Process this while we do this. But you wanna tie them up tight and basically put them right into your recycling can. And you can start using these immediately if you have them. Again, um, if you haven't picked up yours kit from the city yet, uh, as soon as you do, you're able to use it. Otherwise, if you're not getting a kit from the city, you can, uh, again, Albertsons is selling them retail in Meridian, and you're uh, able to go down to Meridian and, and purchase them. But again, Jason tied it up tight, and now we're going right into the recycling bin. Right? So inside of the recycling bin, okay. it doesn't matter where inside it, it goes. Um, we typically put them in on our recycling day when your recycling is, is as full as you've got it for that two week period, and just put that in on the end, okay. and. You know, it may be your recycling is a little full and it's sticking up a little bit like that. That's okay, as long as you put the lid, you know, it may be sticking out. Yeah. You know, if you're full, that's fine. Um, but we do need it inside the bag, inside yeah. the cart. That's a good point, Jason. We had a lot of people ask questions about, do I put it in the cart? Do I put it next to the cart? Do I put it on the lid? And the whole intent is, yes, we want it to go in the cart as best possible. Does it matter if it's in the bottom of the cart? No. Does it matter if it's in the top? No. Our perspective is that we understand people want to utilize their recycling cart to fill up the recyclable materials as best they can. If your cart becomes full of ones and twos and cardboard and, and cans, then go ahead and put your orange bag, like Jason said, just on top of all of that stuff and close the lid as best you can. If it's not fully closed, that's okay. What else you got, Shannon? Um, vitamin bottles and pill bottles from Sharon and Linda. Sure. Wondering on yeah. those. Okay, again, I would go to our, our guides, and okay, there's the two guides. Um, I want to make clear that there's the home guide, which is the basic guide, and there's a more advanced guide that was um, put out. I know it's on the Facebook group. They're both on the Facebook group, on the website, right. and have gone out in email. Good. Okay, so I would get that pill bottle, and I would first check and see if it had a, a marked number, and if it's four, five, six, or seven on it, that we know that could go into the energy bag. And if I look down further, pill bottles are on the list. Amber colored pill bottles yep. can go into the energy bag. 
Now there are some, say, vitamin bottles. Yeah. If you look at it, you'll find that it's a number one. Now that number one is go into your regular recycling cart, loose. With the lid going in the With the lid bag. going in an energy bag, correct. Awesome. And since we are public works, I'll interject here from a wastewater standpoint and just ask everyone, please do not flush your pills. You can actually put your pills or vitamins in a bag and take them and drop them off at any of the police stations. Um, I believe ISP also accepts them. So they do uh, pill drop off events as well as just being able to drop them off at any time. So please do not flush your pills down the toilet. Um, just go ahead and bag those, bring them in to the police department, and then you can go ahead and do as Jason just said with your bottles. That's a great point. Thanks for bringing that up, Shane. Um, let's see, I have, Joelle's wondering, she has an aluminum disposable cake pan. It says number six. So if it says number six, it's probably not aluminum, because uh, if it's numbered, it should be plastic. Because uh, aluminum wouldn't be, generally have a, a number on it. I think it's fair to say that at this point, we're not sure. Uh, and if you're not sure, throw it out. We can certainly do some research and we can get back to you. To that question and, and truly find out yeah. perhaps it is recyclable but we wouldn't want to steer you wrong so again if you're not sure throw it out um, and if we find out some information we'll be happy to post it on the Facebook yeah. group. Um, Dan's wondering about Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags are in the, the bag category we have one here so all plastic bags can go into your heavy yeah. energy bag. Pull that back out so people can see maybe they jumped out late um, Joelle's wondering about McDonald's McCafe cups. Uh, she said that it's numbered number five. I can't remember if it has something around it as well. It might be mixed use. It might be a little foam padding or something. Mm -hmm. and it's, if it's a coffee cup, it's more than likely line, wax lined to keep the paper from absorbing it. I would they do say. have, um, perhaps it's, you know, if it's a, one of their plastic cold ones. Drink. If it's a cold drink like this and it's a number five and it's just plastic, that could go into your energy bag. Um, if it's mixed with anything else, I'm thinking something, something more like, like, this, like that, that would be a paper cup and it shouldn't have any plastics numbers on there. Right. So all paper cups, again, are coated on the inside. That's two material that goes in the trash. Yep. Trash that. Okay, got time for about ten, five, ten more minutes, so Okay. A few more questions. So Joelle is clarifying it's the lid to the aluminum pan. It says five, but it has a crinkly feel to it, yep. she said. Yeah. So when you can look at your guide, um, anything marked four, five, six, or seven should go into your hefty energy bag. Not into your recycling bin, but your hefty energy bag. So but now I know what she's talking now about. She's the talking number, about the, the lid. The brownie the, lids. So the bottom, if it was just an aluminum pan, that could be rinsed out and put it in your regular recycling bin. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. All right, unless anybody else has questions, I have one here wondering if they are for sale in Meridian, which they are now. Um, I went and verified yesterday, they are on the shelves in Meridian Albertson's stores. Um, so we do know you can, you can buy those in the Albertsons. They're generally where all the other trash bags and plastic bags are um, in that section of the store. It's, we know some are down low, some are up high. So, but they should be, um, the Albertson staff should be able to answer your questions as to where they are, and they're generally where the other plastic bags are. And they look just like the roll that Dave has there. There you go. Um, a question that we've gotten a few times, Joelle, thank you, bread bag tabs. Good question. That is a good question. Um, again, I would go back to our, the guide and see if there's anything on there, if it's, if it has a marked number, then you go by the marked number, four, five, six, or seven, would be going to your energy bag. If it's unmarked plastic and it's not on your list of items that could go in your energy bag, be one of those unlabeled plastics. One of those unlabeled plastics. And there are a lot of those out there. Yep. We know that. Yep, there are. So again, when in doubt, throw it out. Okay. That's one of those unlisted plastics. Um, styrofoam coolers that good that cold goods are shipped in from Sarah. If it's just the styrofoam, that could go into the energy bag. Yeah, and obviously in that case, you'd either want to 
utilize it to put other energy bag materials inside of or break it down so that you save space in your energy bag. Yeah, I, I, it sounds like something from Blue Apron, Brave Fruit, they have yes. some of those type of things where they ship full things. Sure. I try to reuse those yep. as much as I can. Yeah. Eventually you could break it down, put it into your bag. So this next question um, might lead into another topic here. Laura is wondering, metal lids from glass jars. That is um, a good question. You'd have to look to see if it had two different materials in it. Sometimes they coat those in plastic. Um, if it's not coated in plastic, and it's just like a mason jar type of lid, right. you could put that into your recycling. Right. So really look for the two materials. If it's got a a rubber seal built into it or onto it that you can't peel apart. When in doubt, throw it out. Um, if it's truly just a piece of aluminum lid, then you can recycle that. And then the glass jars themselves? So glass is a, a new topic for Meridian, and if, in case people out there don't know, um, right now you can call Republic Services and sign up for a curbside glass service that will begin in October. Uh, but you can actually sign up right now and Republic is working with people that sign up to deliver their uh, glass recycling carts if they so choose and would like to do that. Um, and also in October, Republic Services will open at their transfer station on Franklin Road a drop-off site so people can actually just collect their bottles. When they get a, a fair amount of them, they can take them over to the transfer station. That begins in October as well. Wonderful. Um, Tracy's asking about padded envelopes that have the bubble wrap inside, so it would be the, the paper type on the sure. outside and then the bubble wrap in. So again, that would be two Sounds materials. Like two material thing. You'd have paper and plastic um, combined, so that would be two unseparable materials. You put that into the trash. Yeah. Good yeah. question, though. Yeah. Um, did you go find the envelope in there with the... Yes. So This is a hot topic. Okay. So you get a lot of mail, a lot of junk mail that comes with these um, plastic window in it. And the rest of the envelope is paper. So we, we recycle paper, uh, the plastic. Um, again, if you are a dedicated recycler and you wanna remove that plastic by you know, tearing that out, punching it out, that's ideal and it's not terribly difficult. Um, but I would say if that's going to prevent you from recycling this, that was pretty pretty easy. I took the, the plastic out there, still need plastic. Yep. So and then that you can put your recycling bin. Now if no. you have a lot of mail and you don't want to take everything out, it's we're told it's not the worst thing if you put all of that into your recycling so bin. It's still it's paper. Yeah. It's majority of it's paper. In that case, um, yeah, we, we have been told and we have found out that it's okay just to go ahead and recycle it straight away. Um, but if you're again Jason said if you're detailed about it and worried about it, certainly you can make the effort to pull the plastic out. That's all the better. Yep. Excellent. I think that's all the questions we have. All right. Well, we appreciate the time and certainly we're, we will be uh, monitoring the, the Facebook page and answer any questions that do come up and uh, hopefully it was a valuable time spent for people and they give yep. them some tips and tricks maybe. Yep. Absolutely. Remember, most of these questions can be answered in a guide if you go through them. So keep these handy. You know I have them handy at my house yep. and I refer to them often to make any decisions. So. All right, thanks yeah. Jason. So thanks, thank Dave. you to Jason and Dave. Thank you guys, everybody for tuning in. Avis, are you wondering about the number for Republic Services? I will post their phone number in the comments so you guys can call. The guides that Jason's been referring to, those are posted. You can find them in files in the Facebook group. You can also search for guides in the Facebook group. They're also on our website. Um, and I have emailed them out to everybody. Or you can email us at trashtalk at meridiancity.org. I'd be happy to send those to you guys. Thank you, Rick, for responding with Republic Services phone number. This is why we love Facebook, because you guys help us out and can answer questions as well. Um, if you guys do have any other questions, don't hesitate to continue to post in the group or comment on this video with pictures or just descriptions of what you're wondering about. If we don't know the answer, we'll find it for you. But thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, we will continue to watch for all of your questions. Thank you guys for participating and doing your part. Thank you. Bye.